let's talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. So a lot of, you know, a lot of Christian nationalists have this habit of promoting theocracy and then they back down as soon as someone calls them out on it. And what I saw this week was just a perfect example of that. It's from a dude named Brent Van Norman. He is a candidate for mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Brent Van Norman. Last weekend, he spoke at the church of another Christian nationalist named Jackson Lehmeyer. Uh, If that name sounds familiar, Jackson Lehmeyer is a right-wing Republican who ran for U.S. Senate a couple of years ago, but he lost in the primary. So anyway, Brent Van Norman, running for mayor of Tulsa, goes to Jackson Lehmeyer's church, and he gets a few minutes to just speak and basically tell everyone to vote for him, which is a whole nother issue. But I want to share with you what he said to that church, okay? Uh, It's about 45 seconds. Check it out, then I'll talk about it. I am unashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation. My number one uh, qualification for being mayor of Tulsa is that I am an unashamed follower of Jesus. Without him, I can do nothing. And I think that if you go back and study the history of our nation and our founding, one, the pulpit was the primary tool for the Revolutionary War, uh, communicating to people, but two, public officials had to be Christians in many areas. And we've gone so far away from that. And we need to get back. (laughs) There's so much wrong with that. Okay, first of all, if your primary qualification for mayor is that you are a Christian, or it's your religious label, you are admitting you are not a good candidate. (laughs) Like my primary qualification for doing any sort of public work should have nothing to do with my atheism. That doesn't make me better than anybody. But this guy's like, yeah, what do you do as mayor? Preside over baptisms or something? Then maybe, okay, but it's not. That's not what you do. Your job as mayor is to represent everyone in your community. And this guy doesn't know that. And then he said in there um, that I think if you go back and study the history of our nation and our founding, public officials had to be Christians in many areas. And we've gone so far away from that. And we need to get back. Yeah, we need to get back to the good old days when everyone had to be Christian and also slavery was a thing. Like, look, to be clear, being a Christian was never a requirement for public office anywhere in the United States. It's literally in the Constitution, which Republicans love to say they've read, but they haven't. Um, Look, in some states, yeah, there were requirements that you had to believe in God to hold higher office, and those are now unenforceable. But even then, it didn't say you had to be a Christian. You just had to believe in God. So we know there is no religious test for public office. In practice, obviously, it always helps to be a Christian. We have a habit of electing Christians. I know there's a long tradition of people taking an oath of office on the Bible, but none of that stuff is mandatory. And this guy's acting like, oh yeah, you remember back in the good old days when you had to be a Christian and there were no Muslims or atheists or Hindus around? Those were the good old days, weren't they? We need to get back to that vote for me. I love Jesus. Like, what what does he even want to get back to? Let's say we did elect only Christians to office. What does he want the consequences of that to be? Because I wish people like him would finish that sentence. What policies do you want to see put in place? Because in a way, this is what the whole Project 2025 conversation has been about. When you have Christian nationalists putting their desires down on paper and then normies read it and it's like, oh my God, all of this is insane. It's like, yeah, finish the thought. You wish only Christians were in public office. Why? What is it that you want to do? You want to ban women from having any reproductive rights? Then say that. Because clearly you don't care about Christians in office. You care about what that means politically. So just tell us what you think. Don't try to step around it or avoid saying what it is you actually mean to say. Also, while you're at it, tell me what Bible you think we should put in public schools. Which version of the Bible? Uh, What should happen to the non-Christians? who are in public office or running for public office? Should they just be banned from the ballot? Finish the thought. That's all I'm asking. 
So for what it's worth, the Tulsa World newspaper, they did ask him some of these questions. Uh, like, hey, what did you mean by that dumb thing you said? And what do you think this guy did? He backtracked because they always backtrack. All right. Van Nor this is from the Tulsa World. Van Norman clarified his remarks in an interview with the Tulsa World on Monday, saying he was not advocating that the government needs to be Christian. No, 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 no. My point would be that I think people that are informed by Christian values, he won't tell you what they are, just, you know, wink, wink, make good public servants and they have a servant's heart, Van Norman said. And so I would hope that as a result of my value system in which I care for humanity and I try to treat and I try to treat people with equality, I try to treat people with love. And there's a moral foundation that gives me that I hope people would appreciate. And I hope my motives are pure in what I'm doing and I'm not doing them for the wrong reason. Ugh. That word salad is a weird way to say he really hates trans people. He doesn't want to see gay and lesbian people have any rights. Bisexual people don't exist in his world. Um, this idea that like I'm a Christian, that means I'm a good person with good values unless you belong to the following 97 categories. That's how he responded to the Tulsa world about all this. Like horrible answer because it didn't answer the question at all. Um, and there's nothing unique or interesting about Christian values that makes that person more electable. Honestly, if you look at the voting records of people who won their seats on the basis of their supposed Christian values, there is no shortage of cruelty, performative Republican nonsense, MAGA ass kissing. Like people who run for office for secular reasons can be excellent public servants, regardless of their religious background. There are many of them who don't talk about their religion because they're elected to do a job. The fact that this guy, Van Norman, looks down upon everyone who doesn't share his mythology, that should tell non-Christian voters, and there are many of them in Tulsa, maybe not in all of Oklahoma, but definitely in the big city in Oklahoma, it tells them what he thinks about them. Not very highly, right? Um, by the way, there are five candidates who are in this race for the mayor of Tulsa because the outgoing Republican mayor, uh, I'm sorry, the Republican mayor says he doesn't want to run again. So there are five candidates running to replace him. And I looked up some of them. I don't know all of their qualifications, but I would argue that their faith labels are arguably the least important thing about them, especially when you consider that this guy's views on substantive issues are just as meaningless as his religious statements, because guess what he believes in? According to the Tulsa World, he said that during that speech in the church, he also said, you know what the root cause of homelessness is? Has nothing to do with homes. No, he said it's, quote, not primarily a housing issue. It's a drug addiction issue. It's a mental health issue. Like, yeah, that stuff can play a role. But you know what also causes homelessness? Not being able to afford a home. And as mayor, you might have some say in how people can buy homes or have affordable housing. Like religion doesn't put a roof over your head. Interestingly enough, Van Norman did say that church-state separation is clearly established law right now. Right now. Like he doesn't wish it would be, but I guess it's the way it is right now. Like that's weird. There was also one more exchange. I don't have a video clip of this, so I'll just read it to you. But there was an exchange where the pastor came back up on stage and he said, uh, hey, Van Norman, I got a pop quiz for you. How many genders are there? And uh, what did Van Norman say? Let me. Sh oh, here it is. I do have it right here. How many genders are there? Lameyer asked Van Norman. There are two. And let me give you the scientific definition of a woman in case, uh, you know, because there are people that, you know, science is important, right? Words are not his thing. And they base things on science. Scientific definition of a woman is it's an adult with two X chromosomes, period. To which Lehmeyer says he's qualified to be mayor. He knows what a woman is. How many times do we have to have this conversation with these people, like, you don't even have to be a trans right advocate to know that the definition of woman is just that super simplified. Like, there are women who do not have two X chromosomes. There are men who have two X chromosomes. 
There are also, while we're at it, there are women who have hysterectomies and don't have a uterus. But when you are dealing with Christian bigots and J.K. Rowling and Richard Dawkins, who like see the world in black and white when it comes to this one issue, there's never any room for nuance. And also, who the hell cares? Like, what does that have to do with being mayor? M mayors do not take votes on issues like gender. Mayors like have a job of fixing potholes and bringing businesses to the community. What does any of that have to do with the shit these people care about? Like, what does it tell us? It tells us that this guy wants to make life as miserable as possible within his power for LGBTQ Tulsans and their allies. He actually trashed another mayoral candidate uh, for her platform of inclusivity. I want to see if I could find this one last. Yeah, here we go. Here's what he said about her because she said we should be a sanctuary city for LGBTQ Americans or something. He said, we can't allow that to happen. She wants it to be a welcoming city. I fully believe that if she is mayor, throughout the month of June, you are going to see some multicolored flags lining our city streets. Oh, my God. And you won't if I am mayor. So I'll just tell you that right now. Like, oh, my God, the city of Tulsa might have multicolored flags in the street. And if you elect this guy, that will never happen because... I don't know what he's going to do. Put special coating on the street lamps so that you can't put a flag around them? I don't know. It it is It boggles my mind that this is the thing that these people care about. Um, by the way, on Tuesday night this week, this is after he spoke to the church on Sunday, Lehmeyer hosted Van Norman again at his church, this time to have a town hall meeting and to tell everyone to vote for him, which I know violates IRS regulations. Um, but he said... I want you to vote for this guy because, quote, it would be good to have someone in that office that is on our team. As if any other person as mayor would not care about these people because they are Christian. They're, that's just not true. So just everyone here is lying and they're being horrible candidates for public office. If you're curious, by the way, and if you live in Tulsa, this election takes place on August 27th. Uh, if no candidate, if someone gets 50% of the vote, they are the new mayor. If the five candidates run and nobody gets 50%, then the top two will go to a runoff election a later, on, uh, later on. So that's what's going to happen later on this week, uh, later on this month. We'll see. But just a totally wacky thing for anyone to care about.